Metal Jesus here, and I am back with a video that is all about my Sony PSP game collection. Now, I have over 200 games for the system, and it covers almost every genre. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I released a PSP buying guide a while back, but that video was really designed for someone who didn't know anything about the handheld, and I really only recommended about 10 games in that. This video here is designed for someone who is looking to go a little bit deeper into the handheld and see what's out there and see what I play on the system and what I put on my shelf. Now, a couple things I wanna mention here is that uh, normally I would include gameplay footage, but for this video, there's just too many games. It would take months for me to capture all this footage, so just be aware. Also, I don't really play or collect a lot of traditional sports games, so if you are into basketball, baseball, football, soccer, that sort of stuff, you're not gonna see a lot in this video, even though those games are, are out there and are usually pretty good on the PSP. All right, without further ado, let's take a look. start this video off where the PSP shined the brightest and that is with role-playing games. Here is a sample of my RPGs but I'm gonna go through more of them and we're gonna start off with one of the rarest games on the PSP and that is Hexy's Force. This is a role-playing game that has only increased in value and popularity since it was originally released and that's because it is a really good game and it's perfect for portables because you can finish it fairly quickly, which is something that I like. Here is Valkyria Chronicles 2, which is nice if you like the original game because this is the official sequel and it only came out on the PSP. And Fade Extra is a really nice little dungeon crawler that not a lot of people have heard about or played. Tactical RPGs are well represented on the PSP and the Disgaea series here is some of the best that you can get on the handheld. These are actually really highly reviewed, really high ratings. There are several Ease games on the PSP. I have two of them here. The one of note is The Oath of Felgana. That's a remake of the third game with all updated 3D graphics. And here are some more RPGs, including Wild Arms XF or Crossfire, which was the first time a Wild Arms game was on a portable system, as well as Persona 3. And then we're gonna wrap it up down here with some Final Fantasy games. Final Fantasy was well represented on the PSP. And you can't forget a Kingdom Hearts game. One of my favorite RPGs on the PSP is Brave Story New Traveler. This was a total surprise Love this game. When I finished it, I was so bummed, I wanted to just turn around and replay it. It's that good. Another classic on the PSP is Jean d'Arc, or it's basically Joan of Arc, kind of reimagined, but this is a turn-based tactical RPG. So good. Valkyrie Profile Leneth was originally a PlayStation 1 game, but when they brought it to the PSP, they added all new CG cutscenes. This is a fantastic game. Here's another turn-based strategy game that not a lot of people mention, and that is Generation of Chaos. I think this might have also come out on the PS2 and mobile. And here we have even more RPGs on the PSP. This is where it starts getting a little obscure. Some of the titles that most people haven't heard about, like Lord of Arcana and Popa LaCroix. I think that's how you pronounce that. Also, Kingdom of Paradise. There's some D&D &D games on this. There's some top-down Diablo-like games. There's a lot going on on the PSP if you like your role-playing games. Here's a game I played to death when it first came out. That is Puzzle Quest Challenge of the Warlords. Now, this is a... I know you're probably thinking, what, an RPG? It's actually a match three, but it's hardcore RPG and so much fun. I love this game. Here's a game that rarely gets mentioned and that is Bounty Hounds on the PSP. Now this only came out on the PSP and what's cool about this is that you are a mercenary and this is basically just an action RPG or hack and slash, but it's actually pretty decent. And if you like these kind of games, you should definitely check this out. 
And here is the Zelda game that we never got on the PSP, and that is Guru Min, A Monstrous Adventure. This is an action RPG, just like Zelda, has tons of wit, tons of charm, a great game. Here is one of my latest additions to my collection, and that is Summon Night 5. And this only came out on the PSP recently, so probably really low numbers of production on this. Now let's move on to something that I absolutely love, and that is racing games on the PSP. The, the hardware was perfect for this genre. Right off the bat, if you're gonna get a PSP, you need to own MotorStorm Arctic Edge. This is a beautiful, excellent racing game that I believe they ported over to the PS2. Also, OutRun 2006 Coast to Coast. Oh my God, the drifting in this game, so good, so good. Now, if you prefer more simulation games, the PSP has two of them. Now you have Gran Turismo, of course, but you also have Codemasters Race Driver 2006, another really great simulation game. Definitely check it out. I need to give a special shout out to the Juiced series on PSP. Now these games also came out on the big consoles like the PS2 and Xbox, but they ran really well on the PSP as well, especially Juiced 2. That game looks fantastic. You guys know that I'm a huge fan of the Burnout series, and when they brought Legends to the PSP, I was completely stoked. Legends is a best of game, and then Dominator is all new. So these are really fantastic on the handheld. Now they did port Dominator over to the PS2 if you wanna play it there. Here is a total hidden gem on the PSP, and it is Cars race o -Rama. Yes, it's a licensed Cars game based on the Pixar movie, but Man, this is a really good racing game. If you can find a copy, definitely check it out. Race O Rama. If you're looking for something a little more realistic, I have this Rally and also Superbike game here. But honestly, neither of them are really that great, although the Rally one's probably a little bit better. If ATV and Motocross is more your thing, well, there are a ton of these games on the system as well. Although On the Edge is probably the best one. That's the one in the center there. So definitely pick that one up for a good time. Also a big shout out to the Need for Speed franchise, which just went all in on the PSP. And honestly, I think some of these PSP versions are better than the big console versions. I know, it's crazy but true. I occasionally like flying games and there's some good ones on the PSP. Probably one of my favorite is Snoopy vs. The Red Baron. This is a port of the PlayStation 2 version and it runs fantastic on the PSP. Also, Afterburner Black Falcon is a arcade shooting game, very similar to the arcade versions. Here is a flight simulator from Codemasters called Heat Seeker. Pretty well done, actually. And then we have two Ace Combat games. Now, I only have one, but there was two of them released and they're getting kind of collectible, kind of pricey. And at the end here is a naval game. I didn't know where else to put it, but it's called Steel Horizon. I haven't played much of it, so if you have, please tell me if it's worth my time. The PSP was also home to a bunch of 2D and 3D fighting games. Now, this is not my, my genre of choice. I, I'm not really that great at these games, so I've only got a couple here. However, I was able to get into the Beautiful Joe game on the PSP. It's really fun. First person shooting games were a bit of a challenge on the PSP because there's no second analog stick. And so it was kind of, it was kind of tough for developers to make good games on it. But I do have several that I think are worth your time. The two Coded Arms games on the PSP were exclusive to it. And I remember these being some of the first examples of developers doing first person shooting correctly on the PSP. These are actually really fun. They're kind of generic, but they're, they're pretty decent first person games. They're, they're pretty cool. Also, the two Siphon Filter games on the PSP are excellent. Now, again, they were designed for the PSP from the ground up and these are probably two of my favorite games on the system in this genre. They're just fantastic. I've gone back and played both of them several times. Sony also brought two of its franchises to the PSP, Killzone and Resistance Fall of Man. Although I would have to say, I actually like Killzone Liberation probably the best, 
because it's really unique to the to the PSP where it's this top-down action shooter game that's really well done. It's a lot of fun. And then you also have the SOCOM series. Now, I love SOCOM on the PS2, and SOCOM Fireteam Bravo 1, 2, and 3 are really good. And multiplayer on these games was fantastic. They did make a fourth SOCOM game called Tactical Strike, and in this game, they mixed it up a bit. It's a, it's a tactical strategy game, so it's turn-based. It's a little bit different than the other ones, and I don't think it really connected with people that much. I played and beat it. I thought it was okay, but I definitely prefer Fireteam Bravo. Not many people realize there is a Ghost in the Shell first-person shooter on the PSP, and it's okay. It's nothing special. Here I have grouped together a bunch of licensed games. Some of them good, some of them eh, not so much. But let's start with the Star Wars Battlefront games. Star Wars Battlefront on the PSP was surprisingly good and the multiplayer was awesome, just like on the big console versions. The PSP got a port of Force Unleashed and I played and beat it on the PSP at the time. And yeah, it's actually pretty decent. Fans of Star Wars may not realize that handhelds like the PSP and the DS got an exclusive game called Lethal Alliance. Now, it's not a great game, but it's not bad either. It's just kind of generic, but again, I want to mention it here because the PSP version is way better than the DS version. I mentioned in the intro that I don't really play or collect traditional sports games, so these are the kind of games I typically play. Let's go ahead and start with Blood Bowl which is basically a really bloody version of football. And this is an okay game. It's it's really in depth, which probably follows the tabletop version, but, and then after that, I really like these cartoony golf games. The Hot Shot series is just excellent on the PSP. The first and second one right here, fantastic, but not a lot of people know about this one. Fantasy Golf Pena is just as bright and colorful and as fun as Hot Shots Golf. This is based on a South Korean MMO, and if you like these kind of games, definitely check it out. You guys know I love the SSX series, and the version on PSP is kind of a greatest hits. It has levels from a bunch of different games. And then you have Dead or Alive Paradise. This, this counts as a sports title, right? Sports slash swimsuit <laughs> dating simulator. I don't know. I picked it up because it looks silly. It's surprisingly collectible. It's kind of going up in price. So just be aware. These games here are a mix of compilations of older games and new reboots or remakes of classic game franchises. I kind of put them together here. Hopefully it makes sense. I do like buying these compilations of old games because it's nice when you're out and about and you can have on one UMD like 40 classic Atari 2600 games like you see here or 28 classic Sega Genesis games. And if they're emulated correctly, it's pretty fun. It's very handy to do. Here are two ports of Tomb Raider that are really excellent on the PSP. Now they, they had to downgrade the graphics a little bit, of course, but the gameplay is very solid in both of these. And if you like the Tomb Raider franchise, you just pick it up. Here's a pretty cool remake of Space Invaders called Space Invaders Extreme, very fun. And then over on the right, you have Castlevania. Now this is kind of unique because it combines Symphony of the Night and Rondo of Blood on one UMD, very cool. Two arcade franchises that got rebooted on the PSP, Battlezone, not so much, it's pretty dull. But Alien Syndrome is pretty awesome, lots of fun. R-Type Command is a weird turn-based tactical game for the PSP, not very good. But Sid Meier's Pirates, yeah, it's a pretty rad remake reboot of the Commodore version. Here I have put some puzzle games together, as well as other games that maybe don't fit in other genres or just some random odds and ends. A game that was exclusive to the PSP for a long time is called Crush. This is a 2D slash 3D puzzle game that was a lot of fun when it first came out. The Luminous series launched with the PSP. It's a mix of puzzle slash music rhythm, 
really fantastic series. And then we have Work, Time, Fun, or what I like to say, what the f this is one of the weirdest games on the PSP, but not only that, it's one of the weirdest games in my entire collection. Think of the WarioWare games, those mini games, but way, way bizarre, and frankly, way worse. Field Commander is a PSP exclusive. Sony created this game to compete with the Advance Wars series on the Game Boy Advance. And this is actually a really competent turn-based strategy game, just like Advance Wars. The only difference is it doesn't have quite the personality, but it's very good. You can't talk about the PSP and not mention the excellent Patapon series. They made three of these on the handheld, and these are a really unique mix of rhythm and also strategy. Very good stuff. Here is a game you don't hear about often, and that is Downstream Panic. This is a Lemmings clone but it's cuter. It's a little bit more Nintendo-like. It's, it's kind of neat. Frantics is an early PSP game that is a 3D puzzler. Imagine the early Tomb Raider games, the puzzle solving you would do in that, mixed with a turn-based Frogger game. It's really unique. If visual novel games are your thing, here is a special edition of Hakuwaki. This is, like I mentioned, a visual novel game on the PSP. Not exactly my favorite style of game to play, but this collector's edition is pretty awesome. Let's take a look at the action adventure games that were on the PSP, of which there were many. I think it's because the PSP was pretty powerful. I mean, a lot of developers try to make games that were fairly close to the PlayStation 2 counterpart. These Loco Roco games here, so much fun, so cute. Let's go up and take a look at the Metal Gear Solid games. Now I have three of the four that came out on the PSP and honestly, I really like Acid. It's a turn-based card game in the Metal Gear universe. Also, other Sony franchises were well-received and well-developed on the PSP, including the Jack and Daxter series and also the Ratchet and Clank series. And of course you have to mention the excellent God of War series on the PSP. I also wanna give a shout out to the Death Junior series if you like Tim Schafer's Psychonauts, that 3D platformer, you definitely should check out Death Jr. It's really good. Here are some more action adventure games. I told you there was a ton of them. So let's take a look here. We're gonna start off with some survival horror, obscure. We also have a couple Silent Hill games. Some of them better than others. Also Manhunt 2 came out on PSP and it's actually pretty good. Am I the only person who remembers the Ape Escape series? They were well represented on the PSP. These are really fun games, but I'd love to see Sony bring them back. Gun was a pretty fun Western game on consoles and the PSP got its own version as well. It had most of the game from the big consoles plus extra missions. That's a look at most of my PSP games, but I do occasionally run into and collect the UMD movies. And I did a video on it because I know there's a lot of hardcore UMD collectors out there. So I'll link to it in the corner here. But at the end, I wanna mention that there are over 800 games released just for the PSP. And I know some of you collectors out there are really hardcore about it. So tell me what should be in my collection because I'm always on the lookout. So please post a comment Comment down below what games you think I should add to my PSP collection. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know down in the comments. It might be fun to do one on, say, my collection of PlayStation 2 games or maybe the GameCube, maybe even the PC, kind of dig deeper into that, maybe break it up by genre. Love to know what you guys think. Thanks very much for watching.